Thank you, Dennis Penn, to come and share your valuable experiences with us. I'd like to give a short introduction about Dennis, Mr. Dennis. Dennis Lawrence was author and broadcaster, has been a teacher of Raj Yoga meditation and spiritual knowledge for the past 48 years. Dennis Lawrence has a background in journalism and worked for TV and radio news programs at the BBC and Canadian Broadcasting Corporation during the early 1970s. In 1974, she began her study and practice of Raj Yoga meditation at the Brahmakumari's World Spiritual University in London. She became a full-time dedicated teacher and practitioner of the Raj Yoga meditation and the spiritual study of the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita with the Brahmakumari's World Spiritual University. She made a deep study of the mythology and scriptures of India and other cultures and traditions of the Bronze Age until modern times with special attention to their relevance to modern psychology and cross-cultural issues. She has special interest in human rights, not only from the social and political angle, but also from the angle of empowering individuals to understand and claim their rights in all sectors of life. This covers minorities and indigenous groups living in cultures and are hostile and that so and that do not respect the value and relevance of ancient knowledge and visitor. We are uh, the, the sister Dennis has also authored 10 volumes of postgraduate diploma of education in values and spirituality, which is currently being taught in several universities in India and Malaysia. There's a lot more we can talk about sister Dennis, but we don't like to waste more time and would look forward to listening to all her valuable experiences. Thank, Thank you, sister, for being with us. Om Shanti, Dennis Ben, good morning. Good morning. Om Shanti. Baba and Baba's children, Baba's family over here. So, thanks a lot for actually for spending such valuable time which you spend with Baba. So, today you're spending with Baba's family. But you look very fresh. <laughs> As if it's seven o'clock, more early time. <laughs> yes, so yes. That's good. I'm sure we have not uh, uh, disturbed you in for your meditation. <laughs> Baba's <laughs> company this time. But anyways, and uh, it's very good for us to have you with us. जैसे आप हिंदी बहुत अच्छे से समझती हो और हिंदी बोलती भी हो और आप सभी को पता है ना डेनिस पेन हमारी पहली बाबा की डबल फॉरेनर बच्ची है फर्स्ट डबल फॉरेनर सो बाबा इज बीज रूप और आप तो मास्टर बीज ऑफ फॉरेनर इज इट ट्रू it is true yes uh i enjoyed listening to you reading them early and um being with you and being with baba and being you know through zoom we are always everywhere in the world it's amazing and you were asking me about um my experiences with avyakt baptara and when I came into Gyan, you know, it was um, in 1974 when I first came to India. And that was a very different India from what it is now. Bab Dada had been Abhyat only um, five years. And so the experiences with Bab Dada were at that time, I remember we were meeting Baba, I think we were about 30, 35 people sitting in um, the history hall in Panda Bhavan, and we would meet Baba there, and Bab Dada was sitting on the floor, 
and we were sitting on the floor and I think I was probably one or two meters from Baba and um, any further away than that we thought was a bit far away and now you can see uh, it's a very very different um, time of meeting Baba in gigantic gatherings in Shantivan and we would um, stay up whole night because Baba would come around 6.37 in the evening and um, speak the Murli to all of us and we would have picnic with Baba and Baba would meet everyone individually and um, you know, at that time, Didi Manmohini was there, so she would be sitting next to Baba. Um, and everyone was on the floor. Um, we were young. <laughs> and um, Baba would meet individually. I remember one time Baba spoke to me about 45 minutes continuous. <laughs> and that was extraordinary. I think that. In later years, um, people didn't really realize what a close, uh, intimate relationship we had with each other and with uh, Bob Dada because the family was very, very small. I remember one time, of course, we would come to Madhuban and go out to different parts of India for service and come back again to Madhuban. And uh, because it was such a small family, it wasn't necessary to have all the complicated rules and regulations and um, systems. Everything was so uh, simple, natural, and... Um, Nobody knew about Brahma Kumaris at that time. Now everybody knows. And I remember um, in the, I think it was about 1981, I had, I, I was uh, at the center in Los Angeles at that time. And with me was an American sister who was involved in television. And the two of us used to do television regularly. We had a, a program in um, Hollywood about Raj Yoga. And she wanted to come to India and um, and, and video Bab Dada, which was, had not, not been done before because video was quite new at that time. And the equipment was not like cell phones like we have now, but we had big cameras and we had big monitors. And at that time in India, the electricity was very unstable. And so if you brought te technical equipment into India, it would definitely blow up and uh, get destroyed because of the surges in the electrical current. And so she brought batteries. We had a car battery and we would go in there um, into the, at that time it was um, in Om Shanti Bhavan. I think uh, Om Shanti Bhavan was built in 1983. And uh, I remember we had all this equipment there and it was the first time Baba was speaking in Om Shanti Bhavan. And uh, there were some other people um, who had been working with Karunabai to try to get Baba's um, voice broadcast around to the world. So these were the very, very beginning days of doing this. And um, because of the electricity problem, everybody's equipment blew up, but ours didn't. So we got the footage of Baba. And um, at that time, we had the first Universal Peace Conference. So all these things that were happening in those days was 
very new uh, in terms of technology. So this um, bringing of the deep spirituality of India, the spirituality of Bab Dada, out to the Western world was something unique, something extraordinary. Now it's ordinary, it's every day. But at that time, you know, there was nothing like cell phone. Email was quite new. And um, people don't really realize now how much, um, like it was a huge pilgrimage to come to Madhupan. Because in those days in India, there were steam trains. And the train would move at about the same speed as a goat. So it took a very, very long time to reach. And um, you would go into the train nice and white and come out all black because of the soot and the coal. And these were days I think many people just don't remember unless they're quite old. Um, but you see what was happening at that time. Um, the service was basically quite simple, but the level of spirituality was extraordinary. And um, so these were my, my early days of coming into Gyan. And when I, when I first came to Madhuban, a, a lot of people had never seen any foreigners before. And um, I remember... <laughs> I came in 1974 because, um, you know, my teacher was Daddy Janki. Mm -hmm. How many people would like to hear that too? Yes, yes, definitely. Well, you know, I was an a investigative journalist, and so here I was investigating Brahma Kumaris and what are they doing what are they saying you know at that time india was very fashionable in the west because there were a few gurus from india who were around and traveling and doing events and um, so everybody wanted to know what was the spirituality of india and before um meeting Brahma Kumaris, I had a lot of um, experiences, spiritual experiences, which really is what pushed me to come into Gyan. And I um, was, I, I was not and am not at all religious. I, I make a big difference between religious person and spiritual person, although and most people think it's the same, but I don't think it's the same. I didn't think it's the same at that time. And I wanted to know, uh, you know, what, what's really truth. And since my very young childhood, I wanted the third eye. And um, my Lokik family was involved in British Raj in India. They lived in Calcutta. So I had um, many things of India with me as I grew up and uh, we're always close to India. People were always talking about India. And so it was important for me to know India, to understand India. So for about a year before I met uh, Brahma Kumaris, uh, I used to experience dreams, I would, I would see a document a written in a language that I couldn't decipher. It was not uh, Greek, it was not Russian, but it looked something like that, and I couldn't read it. Uh, but I knew this was the most important information in existence, and I was trying to figure out what it was and why it's coming in my dreams. And um, at that time I was working with the BBC and uh, I was in news. So in news, 
you know, a lot of time you see the news at 10 o'clock at night. So the program I was on was a, a news magazine program that came on at 10 o'clock at night. So I would go to work quite late and come back very late. But in the day before I would go to work, I was by myself just thinking about life and reflecting on these dreams. And I would hear a voice saying to me, and this would happen every day, uh, you have to be a yoga teacher. And uh, I didn't know who was talking to me. And I wanted to know who is this? Uh, very strongly, I wanted to know. And uh, what is a yoga teacher? What is yoga? So I investigated and I came across Hatha Yoga. I practiced Hatha Yoga for a little bit, but I said to myself, I don't want to be um, the gymnastics teacher. I thought of it as gymnastics. And uh, then I discovered there is something called Raj Yoga. So I was looking for Raj Yoga. And um, one day I was sitting by myself, really strongly demanding who is talking to me? I want to know. I want to see you. And all of a sudden, I go into a, a different state of consciousness. And I see a very bright point of light. And I didn't know what is this. I thought maybe it's a reflection of something, but I would move around a little bit. I wasn't in trance, it was like a vision coming into my space. And this point of light started laughing. And I thought, what is this? Uh, I never heard of anything like that, a point of light that um, gives off an aura of bliss a really powerful feeling of bliss and was laughing. And I knew it was someone who didn't have a body. And I said, uh, who are you? I need explanation. Send me a priest to explain this because I don't understand what is this. And then all of a sudden, a person appeared. I was in a, a room with an extremely high ceiling, about 25 feet. And up in the ceiling, this person appeared dressed in white, with long black hair, Indian person, and looked like a man. And I thought, maybe it's a Native American Indian because they would wear long, long hair. And um, I thought, who is this? And this person was, you know, giving me very, very powerful drishti. And I would see this point of light smiling away somehow. And this person looking at me very intensely. And I thought, okay, this is my spiritual teacher. And I was very amazed and wondering, who is this? And what is going on here? I'm thinking, I'm not crazy, this is real, but I need to understand what's going on here. And um, a few days later, I receive um, a, a flyer in my, in my place of work because um, the Brahma Kumari said, just on that day, uh, come to London and had um, organized an exhibition somewhere. I didn't have time to go there. I was very busy with elections going on and all that. And um, 
I, I went um, there a few days later and um, they said, we're going to introduce you to a yogi. So I said, okay, but I, I don't know the protocol for meeting yogis. I know how to meet prime ministers, royalty, all this, but yogis is not something I'm used to meeting. So I was very intrigued and they took me into this very little room and there sitting in meditation was the same person who I had seen coming out of the ceiling. And it wasn't a Native American Indian man, it was a woman from India. And this was Daddy Janki. And so there were just the two of us in that room and they asked me to sit down in front of her and she started to give me very, very powerful drishti. And I had learned what is drishti when I met with the uh, other sister, which was Jianti Didi. And she had given me the beginnings of the course. And it was on about the second day that I met Daddy. And long, long drishti, and I was very easily transported into a highly spiritual stage. The room was filled with light, and big balls of light were uh, traveling between Daddy and me, and big balls of light coming into me and changing me. So I didn't know what is this. And um, I was amazed that this is the same person I'm seeing. So you see, for me to come into Gyan was really not an option because um, definitely uh, Baba had called me through this type of experience. But being an investigative journalist, I needed to know um, on the ground uh, exactly what's going on. So I used to, of course, Daddy didn't speak English and she had just arrived from India and very intense tapasvi. So whenever I would meet her, we would have these long meditations together, drishti. And um, so for me to... Um, come into a state of yoga but was natural, it was automatic. And uh, I would interrogate her. I would come there after work. And um, she was pretty interested that they hadn't had any Westerners um, coming in before or be so interested. And um, you see, for me, uh, I needed to know everything. And I would interrogate her for hours and hours. What is karmati? What is uh, all these um, knowledge of the Gita? So I had to really study all the Indian scriptures to know what they're talking about. And of course, we would have a Murli class and Daddy would be reading the Murli and Janti would be translating it for me. We were all sitting on the floor in this tiny little room. There was only about three or four people in the class. So I had Daddy all to myself, really. Um, and sometimes there were two teachers and one student, you know, just me. And I was absolutely fascinated by what they're saying because I knew that it was true. And uh, so Daddy wanted me to come to India quickly. And so she prepared me to come there. And I said to Daddy, well, I have to go for three months because I have to check this out. And so I came in uh, 1974 um, towards the winter time. And I met Baba and he gave me a name. At that time, it would happen occasionally. 
So he said, yeah, this is Vajanti. So I said, oh, well, that's a great blessing. Um, which has always been very useful for me in um, my life in Gyan, because as you know, there's the blissful stage and also there are many tests. And so uh, I would continue to get little touchings from Baba. Sometimes he would say, remember your name, you are Vajanti, you will be victorious, you will get through this, you will manage everything. And uh, it was a very, very powerful, uh, uh, sustaining blessing. And uh, of course, we would come to India every year. And um, I didn't stay uh, in England very long. Daddy wanted to expand Brahma Kumaris. And so um, I think they thought that having somebody Western who really understood the knowledge and uh, quite quickly I became a dedicated sister, put on the white sari. I knew how to wear sari because um, I remember when I was about 13 years old, um, we were, I was with my mother and we were going shopping and there was an Indian store with Indian clothes in it. I said, I have to have a sari. So then we went in, I bought a sari and um, they showed me how to wear it. So I used to wear sari even, that was in the 60s, long, long before. And uh, so when it came to the Brahma Kumari dress, one day I just came in a white sari to the center. <laughs> the sisters were quite amazed to see me like that. And um, so coming to India for the first time, meeting Baba, and Baba would come every two days, every three days, and um, we would all be in this magical state. Baba would stay for hours and hours and hours, and um, so off to the Murli, sometimes Baba would be meeting someone. We would come in and out of the uh, the history hall, and then later it became meditation hall. And even during my time uh, with Baba, I would see all these buildings go up because in the beginning it was very very tiny Panda Baba, and you you couldn't fit very many people. And I was given to stay um, with Shilu, Shilu Ben up uh, in the uh, upper floor of the history hall because there was very, very little accommodation at that time. And the groups who would come, maybe there would be 10 people, maximum 15. Sometimes we were sent out to uh, stay in places uh, just outside Pandabhavan because there was no accommodation and gradually um, more and more buildings were created and the gathering grew quite quickly. It grew in size. And Adi wanted to expand Brahma Kumaris all over the world. And so I was, first of all, sent to Germany. That was the first center outside England that um, came into existence. And so I went with a sister from Surat, Lata Didi, who subsequently, she, she left the body now, but um, we were together and... Um, She's Gujarati, but she knew a little bit of English because she had stayed in Bangalore where there was a lot of English going on. And you see, when I was in India, um, mostly there were not too many people who spoke English, but Asha Didi was there and she spoke English because she had also been in Bangalore where everyone speaks English uh, quite well. But mostly I used to speak with Jagdish Bhai and um, so we would spend a lot of time together. And as you know, he was, uh, Baba had made him Sanjay. 
So he was the one who would write. So I would read his books and I would also interrogate him about, because I was really interested in the gyan itself and yoga. And, um, you know, in those days, service was to talk about niji gyan to each other and to new people. And we didn't do the kind of service that you do now, which is more to do with um, talk about values and improving your life and this sort of thing. No, we didn't do that at that time. We really went into the depth of who is God, what is soul consciousness. And you know, in those days, people were thinking that the Vinash would be very, very much then. I mean, I came in 1974 and Vinash was thought to be 1976. So you had two years, I had two years to become karmatit and everything. So you had to be quick, <laughs> hurry up and fully engaged. And I remember on the 31st of December of 1976, I was there in, in uh, India and um, everyone was looking at Baba and Baba said, so you all thought that Vinash would be in 1976, but we had to delay it because there are so many people who didn't get the message, so we had to delay it. And um, so you can tell people who are asking you why there is no Vinash in 1976. I say, well, we had to delay it because of you. And here we are now in 2023, many, many years later. And um, now you're really in a period of time where the world is collapsing. And um, I think the interesting thing now is that, okay, Brahma Baba had 30, 33 years, and then Dadi Gulzar, 40 years being the medium for Avyat Bab Dada. And I, I used to spend a lot of time with Dadi Gulzar, and um, we were quite quite close and in those days you know I, I could just understand about a medium a trans medium Shiv Baba Abhyakt Bab Dada coming into her body all of this was easily understandable to me even though I, I think it wasn't so easily understandable to many people but I could see it uh, you know um and with my inner eye, it was very clearly visible. And um, you see, now the question is, okay, now, almost all daddies have become karma tita gone, and Bab Dada not coming anymore. We are reviewing Sakar Murli's, reviewing Avyak Murli's. Baba has told us everything we have to know. And um, so the question is, what are we doing with it? And for me, you know, on one side, there were these incredible spiritual experiences. But you see, a spiritual experience doesn't, um, doesn't stay permanently. You remember it permanently, but you're in that stage occasionally. And what was interesting to me was um, that which is permanent. And what's permanent is the gyan. So you see, with Dadi Jenki as my teacher, she gave um, incredible classes all the time. I don't know if you remember that, but um, her classes were very deep about the relationship with Baba about Gyan, about yoga. So this was my very rich food that I was raised on. 
And so I always gave maximum importance to gyan um, because it is by churning gyan that you come into yoga. And um, I, I think a lot of people don't do that anymore, but they should. And for me, the most important thing is that this is a spiritual university and the information that Baba is giving is extraordinary. And um, he wants it to be proved. So I became extremely interested in um, all the background information. I, I had to study the Gita to see what's the difference between what the Gita says, what uh, Baba says, I had to study the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, and all the various different versions to figure out um, what is the difference and what is the background. Because you can't really understand Gyan properly if you don't know Hindu Bhakti properly. And then I studied all about Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, Christianity, all of these, because um, all these religions, they're based in um, Hinduism, and Hinduism is based in Gyan, and all the changes that took place through the ages, uh, we had to track these changes, and who changed what, when, and how, and why, and this whole matter of omnipresence of God, how that infiltrated into other religions. And um, because Baba's message has to go to the whole world. And so we have to communicate Baba's message in such a way that people can understand what it is. So I've always been preoccupied with that. And um, I remember one time I came to meet Baba, we had a personal meeting, this was maybe after 20, 30 years in Gyan, and Baba said to me, you are the one who understands how to interpret all the symbols, and so tell me, what is the symbolic meaning of these gifts that you have brought? So I had brought, somebody had asked me to give him two candles, one was a butterfly, in the form of a candle, and one was something else, I forgot what exactly, but so I um, was looking at Baba saying, Baba, you are spying on me, <laughs> you know exactly what I do, and um, he would give these various different uh, statements to let me know very clearly that whatever I was doing in my life, and the service and my thinking and everything that he was tracking me. And, um, you know, I still feel this closeness uh, with Baba and in my communication with Baba, it's really no different. So my big focus and concern is how do we make this spiritual university a place where people can learn the depth of gyan and i think that there are not really very many people who are interested in this particular part um, the service that's going on at the moment is more to make gyan very easy very accessible to people and it's about how to make your life better and your relationships better and this kind of thing. Um, but for me, that's not so important. Really important is what exactly is a soul? What exactly is karma philosophy? And I think that people, maybe the thought leaders of the world, they know stuff. And um, there's just, the information that Baba gives is missing from what people know. They're very well-educated people in terms of um, spiritual philosophies from different origins. And so this is my special focus of attention at the moment.
school, you told about that uh, uh, Vedas and all you studied. आपने सारे पढ़ी है तो आप जो वैल्यू एजुकेशन आप सबको पता होगा कि हमारा जो वैल्यू एजुकेशन है उसके जो निमित्त बने हैं आप बने हो डेली स्पेंड जो पूरे इतने सारे यूनिवर्सिटीज में चल रही है बहुत सारी यूनिवर्सिटीज में तो इस उसका एक शॉर्ट में आप बताएंगे आपको कैसे वो प्रेरणा मिली बाबा से बाबा अफेक्ट बाप दादा ने कुछ बिकॉज वही मेन एजुकेशन है जो अभी चल रही है Yeah, um, sorry, I am not going to reply in Hindi. My English is better than Hindi. But you see, first of all, I had to learn Hindi because there was no English anything. And we used to take the Murli in Hindi and speak it out in English. That's how we used to do it. There was nothing like English Murli. So... Um, When this question of values came up, uh, this was, I don't know, 1990s or something like this, uh, people asked Daddy, um, should, we, should we focus on values, mulya, you know? And, and Daddy said, yes, mulya is very good. And um, people liked it. So what had happened is I was in... Um, I was traveling quite a bit at that time. This is 1999. Again, everybody was thinking destruction in 2000 and all that. And um, uh, the Brahma Kumaris had made a contract with a university in um, uh, Karnatak to um, do a course in values. Because in India, there, were, there was a commission that there are some problems in India. What's the problem? And there were three commissions over the years since independence. And so um, they said the problem is there's no values. And so they asked the spiritual organizations to create material on values. So I um, had... At the same time, written a letter to Dadi and um, Nirvarbhai saying that um, I have this um, experience in Amrit Vela that Baba had told me that whatever it is you wanted to do all this time, do it now. And I thought, what are you talking about? what have I been wanting to do for all this time? And that is write the gyan suitable for use in universities. So I wrote this letter and they wrote back saying, get on the next plane to India because we have a contract with this university and you have to come and write it. So come. So I came. And um, how Bab Dada got involved in the program is that when I reached India, you see, Jagdish Bhai was very focused on this, and it was something quite new for Brahma Kumaris to be commissioned by the Indian government and to work with um, a university in India to, um, to create our material for study in, uh, in the universities. So I um, got myself ready. They gave me a very nice place to sit in Gyan Sarovar. And um, you see, the first agreement was in, um, uh, in, in Mysore. And so I went to Mysore And I was staying uh, in uh, one retreat center near to Mysore. And um, they said, okay, you write this course in six weeks. And, uh, you know, I, I did uh, my degree in, um, in England. And you see how 
we do university education in Europe is very different from how it's done in India. So I was looking at it from the angle of a European university education, and you cannot write a course in six weeks. That's not possible uh, because these courses require a huge amount of background information and, and, and. Otherwise, no one will recognize it. Just sit down and write BK knowledge that won't work. It has to be done in context. And I was working with some old elderly professors and they wanted me to do this course in the same way as people have done in India for a long, long time and using moral stories and all that. I said, no, I, I won't do that. That's not going to work. If it worked, it would have worked a long time ago and it didn't work. So I won't do something which doesn't work. And then um, some things happened about how the contract wasn't quite suitable for Brahma Kumaris in terms of control of the material and so on. So I had a meeting with all the seniors and said, look, you know, this agreement that you have made is not exactly what it needs to be because you're just giving everything away to the university and they can do whatever they want and we need to have control over our material. And so they realized that, yeah, this was a big problem. So they called Bab Dada. We had a special meeting with Bab Dada and he said, okay, what you need to do, uh, because you have to break the contract and what you need to do is call those people to Madhuban because when you want to renegotiate a contract, do it on your territory, not on their territory. See, so Baba's knowledge of how to do these things was incredible. So we did that and um, we actually broke the contract. And, um, and then Jagdish Bhai left the body. And uh, that was May of... 2000 or something like that. Hmm? 12th May. 12th May, yes, yeah. so which is one day after my birthday. So <laughs> I always remember that. And uh, so uh, everything was kind of stopped. And then British Mohan by in July, he said to me, okay, um, all this material that you prepared, we have to use it because we, we have to make a new contract with a new university. And so I said, okay, I'll do that, but it has to be my way. Otherwise I'm not going to do it because I don't want to make something which is exactly the same as what all the other spiritual organizations have made all about values using moral stories and it doesn't work. So I won't do that. I will only do something which works because a lot of my time and energy involved. So eventually I took seven years to prepare all the material, seven years. And so there I was sitting in this little place in um, Gyan Sarova uh, preparing all the material because, you see, I had to go and interview academics in different parts of India about what really is the problem in India. I'm not going to create material for an invented problem. I wanted to understand the reality of the problem. So I went to meet with different sociologists and there I discovered that there is a huge literature in India uh, in English language. And so I got all this material and I started studying it. What is really preoccupying the writers? I would read people like Kuvempu, I would read uh, people that Brahma Kumari's never even heard of, you know, because we are uh, very preoccupied with our material and a lot of BK's 
don't go out and check what's going on in the world of literature in India, in the world of sociology, in the world of psychology, all of this. And I was very aware about all these things in Europe, but I needed to know exactly what was going on in India about all this. And so I did a lot of research in order to prepare this material and um, make, you, you have to make a bridge between what people know and what Baba is telling. And so I had to do this bridging work. And in fact, one of the titles that Baba had given me in uh, personal meetings with him, he said, you are the bridge. You're the bridge between the West and India. You're the bridge between Gyan and, you know, what the academics know in, um, in the world. Uh, because if you just give Gyan without relating it to an existing context, there's no way that they can grasp it. Um, you, you have to explain things to people in a context. And I was interested in the uh, higher education, the higher educators, the lawyers, the philosophers, the, the sociologists, these kinds of people were, were my interest. And so um, I went ahead and, and prepared this work. And at that time, um, there was a lot of new uh, thought happening in the Western world. I was in America and the new material that had come out in terms of human potential, in terms of uh, combining spiritual, psychological, sociological, literature, philosophy, all of these things, I was very aware about it. And I knew the people who were inventing it in California because I, I was there. And so I um, wanted to create material which took into consideration the new stuff that was emerging. And um, I did not want to just redo old stuff which doesn't work. I, I refused to do that. And so they let me do how I wanted. And then uh, slowly, slowly the book started to emerge and then eventually they all came. And by that time, it was 2007, and um, we started, I started to um, experiment with how to teach it uh, because we had to have completely new teaching methods and there were new forms of teaching that were emerging in America, in Europe. And I knew about these new ways of teaching, which were very different from traditional Indian education. So I introduced these methods and um, uh, one of the things I did is I, I had a group of, I can't remember how many it was, maybe 50 Kumaris um, from the different centers in India. Uh, I said, okay, I, I have to prepare teachers for this course if you want to teach it. You can't just give the books and <laughs> expect them to figure it out, no. And so I, I um, was given... Sukdam in Pandabhavan, and I had about 50 Kumaris. It was during monsoon time that they stayed with me for a month. And so we, I trained them in what exactly is value education, different methods of communicating, of discussing, um, uh, all, all this sort of thing. And then I spent about a year in Surat uh, at uh, South Gujarat University. And um, I would go every week up and down on the train between uh, Mount Abu and Surat and teach the professors. It's a long story. It's a long story. <laughs> I'm so here. very happy yeah. to listen to you. Yeah, but very good achievements. Aapki bhoat achi uplabdiya hai. और बाबा की इस सेवाओं को आपने बहुत बड़ा कंट्रीब्यूशन दिया वैल्यू बेस्ड एजुकेशन आई थिंक सो
corporate management which was uh, introduced by brother k that was in 95 or 2000 yes. aap, yeah. 99 mein aapne introduce kiya so it's very thank thanks bahut acha aapne bataya now it's for time for us to all the class people they want to go <laughs> yes of course so thank you very yeah. much for reminding so, me and it's Yeah, it's happy मकर संक्रांति लोरी आपको पता है ना क्या चल रहा है पता है ना आपको आप थोड़ा बोल लो तो सही आपको पता है हिंदी में ये क्या है बताओ ये है आपका लोरी का दिखाई दे रहा है क्या है थोड़ा सा फ्रॉम सेसमी सीड्स या राइट राइट तिल का तो आज आपको ये तिल का लड्डू खिला रहे हैं ऑनलाइन लड्डू ये आपने फ्रांस में यू मस्ट हैव नॉट हैव इट हैड इट नो नो सो थैंक यू थैंक यू ओके थैंक्स अ लॉट वी आर हमने स्पेशली ये मंथ रखा है व्यक्त मंथ अव्यक्त मास एंड अव्यक्त बाप दादा से जो भी मिले हैं बहुत सेवाई की है एंड साकार एंड अव्यक्त उसका विशेष ये इसलिए एवरी सैटरडे वी कीप इट सो वी वर एक्सपेक्टिंग यू लास्ट सैटरडे बट यू वी डिट कम इट वाज नॉट पॉसिबल फॉर यू सो बट थैंक्स वंस अगेन एंड वी हैव यर द होल ग्रुप फ्रॉम एस आई टोल्ड यू की सारे विदेश से भी है बांग्लादेश और बैंकॉक और भारत के चारों तरफ से है मेनली दिल्ली एंड दिस इज ग्रेटर कैलाश टू इट्स सब ब्रांच ऑफ सिरी फोर्ट तो और फिर बाकी कैलकटा महाराष्ट्र बॉम्बे ऑल ऑफ देम जस्ट फ्रेज द हैंड्स सभी दूर से जो जो है दिल्ली वाले इसका गिव द दृष्टि टू द क्लास नो नो खाली ऊपर इसको होल क्लास पीपल यू कैन सी ऊपर 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 सभी आपको ओम शांति कर रहे हैं ठीक है आप आपको अच्छा लगा आप हिंदी में बताना कैसे लगा बहुत 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 अच्छा लगा मैं बहुत खुशी हूँ आप सभी से मिलकर और जल्दी जल्दी मैं इंडिया में आऊंगी अभी तक थोड़ा प्रोग्राम्स है यहाँ बहुत लोग मेरे पास आते हैं और रिट्रीट्स के लिए वगैरह लेकिन हाँ कोविड के कारण बहुत चेंजेस होते हैं और हमारे सब जूम की सेवा शुरू हुई मैं तो मोस्टली मैं सैन फ्रांसिस्को में थी अभी मेरी बहुत क्लोज फ्रेंड चंद्र दीदी चली गई तो फिर मैं इनके साथ थी हाँ यस तो अभी आप विदेश सेवा में ज्यादा हो हाँ सरोवर में नहीं मिलेंगे हम लोग आने वाले अभी नहीं मैं आऊंगी जरूर आऊंगी <laughs> अब आपसे मिलेंगे फिर okay. बाकी आपके बाकी जो खजाना है उस समय आपसे लेंगे फिर यू जस्ट गिव दृष्टि टू एवरीबडी विथ अ ब्यूटीफुल सॉन्ग विच वुड बी प्लेड इन द बैकग्राउंड
圈。